So the question is, how do I get started? I'm literally at square one. But this is a great question, guys. And, and here's the thing. Everybody okay, starts in the same spot. I'm going to tell you the biggest, biggest secret here. When, when, when the military trains warriors to go off into war, they teach you. It doesn't matter what your skills, how fast you are, how good you can shoot. If your mind is screwed up, you're going to die. <laughs> you will die. Like there's no way you, you can survive. It's, it's knowing how to think and not, and th this is why guys like dealing with your problems, dealing with pains, dealing with death, dealing with things in the past. Like this is why these things are important. Maybe that, that'd be a really good video to go through. Uh, I went through, uh, I lost my first son um, when I was 35. Um, a couple years after that, I think, you know, I don't think my, my marriage, um, really lasted, didn't really know how to recover from that incident with my son, which drew us further apart. <clears throat> and then eventually, you know, my wife filed divorce on me. Um, and uh, so, 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 you know, like I'm telling you that not to make you feel sorry, but I'm telling you that because like, if I didn't set up my life for success and really deal with stuff and learn how to deal with pain, I wouldn't have been able to deal with that pain. And then I, I definitely wouldn't be here. There's zero chance I would be here. You have to know that you're going to lose more than you win. If you really want to be successful in this game, okay, you have to get used to losing, okay? Now, I first learned this in football. I was really good at sports. I, 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 I was varsity in four sports. Uh, and then in the summer, uh, I actually played rugby on Team USA, 19 and under Team USA rugby. Like, I, you know, I was really athletic and um, played Division One football and... But what I learned in sports was most plays in a game, you lose. Think about it, guys. If you win every play, you would score on every play. Every single play you would score, okay? The reason you don't score on every play and you hardly ever score, when you look at an offense might run 60 to 90 plays and they score like three touchdowns, five touchdowns, even a great game, six, seven, eight touchdowns on 90 plays or 80 plays. And so it's like, that's ridiculous. Your losing percentage is so bad. Think about baseball, right? Dude. I mean, they, people have said many times, if you can learn to get on base and hit a base hit three out of 10 times, and you can actually do that, you'll go to the hall of fame. Like you will not just be a multimillionaire baseball player. You will go to the hall of fame. Like it's crazy. This is how business is. Okay. You have to become great at losing. Now everyone goes, oh yeah, I'm good at losing. Man, I lost this. I lost that. I lost... No, it's how you lose. Okay. It's how you lose. It's the attitude you have when you lose. It's, do you leave those deals trying to invest and so bless that other person? Or do you leave those deals bitter? You know what I'm saying? And taking and screwing the other person. Just a big side note here. Most, in fact, every business deal I've ever been a part of in the beginning 100% for every, I'm talking thousands of deals. Everyone always goes, oh yeah, man, you don't have to worry about me. I'm, I'm not the kind of person who's going to screw you. <laughs> you. You ever started a deal and somebody's like, yeah, man, you know, chances are in two years from now, I'm going to get really insecure. And when I do, uh, I'm going to become a total a-hole and I'm going to try to sue you. No, no one says that, right? In the beginning, everyone thinks, everyone's so optimistic, right? Um, but, but, but most deals don't go too well. Uh, in fact, I learned from dealing with deal. I did two deals with guys from Shark Tank and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you know, like Kevin Harrington and, and uh, uh, Robert Hershevik and people like that have told me, dude, if I can get two out of 10 deals to hit, like one out of 10, it, it, I'm, 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 I'm crushing it. I'm going to be a billionaire on one out of 10. <laughs> if I can get one out of 10 to really hit. So the thing is, you can't, you can't really learn how, how like it's how you lose, dude. You're, most of you are missing my point right now. You're going, oh, dude, well, I lose all the time, so I totally got this. No, you don't. You don't. It's how. It's what you think about. It's what you learn. It's how you reflect on it. And this is the thing, guys. I cannot tell you, if you know how to do this right, you will be doing deals, making money, and serving people with people that you may not like, fully like. You may not, I mean, you're, you're not upset at them or, or you, don't, you hate them, okay? But, um, but the people that, you know, you, you probably wouldn't do that deal again because you don't like that person. But, um, but I'm telling you, that is a sign that you really are, are, are on fire with what I'm telling you. Like you really, really got it. 
is, um, you know, you can learn to also have a bad breakup and then it, it doesn't become, you don't take it personal. This is what I'm talking about, about a prosperity mindset, prosperity mindset, everything around you prospers, the people you touch, the family, the car you drive, everything eventually starts to prosper. It may be crappy now. It may look bad. It may not hardly run, whatever, but give it a couple of years, give it some time, you know? Um, so anyway, guys, so I think this is the first thing. Okay. Learn, really learn how to lose. The second thing is you have to understand at this point in your life, it's not about skills. Okay. It's about foundations. Okay. So you're going to go in, I hate to say this, but this is one reason why we don't sell courses hardly at all anymore. Because 95% of people who buy courses are people who skills is not what they need. <laughs> they definitely don't need skills. They're, they, they need better foundations because when stuff breaks, when stuff falls, when you fail, it has to always fall back on the foundation. And that foundation needs to be a billionaire or a millionaire foundation where it, it, everything always falls on the foundation. You can pick up the pieces, look at it accurately, put it, put, put the story together properly um, say, Hey, I don't know this full story. I don't know this. I don't know that. And I'm okay with that. I'm not insecure about that. And, and so if you don't do the proper foundation, you, you, you're, you're toast. I mean, you're, you're toast. You, and, and these are the type of people who they kind of get by mindset, but then they, they make 30 grand or they make 180 or they make 280. And then, you know, five years later, they're toast is, you know, their foundation just was not set up properly. So these are the kind of things that, that I, I built my foundation around. Okay. My foundation was built on proper sleep. Okay. An investment attitude. I learned this from Chet Holmes, um, an investment attitude where everywhere I go, I will invest. I'll invest into people. I'll invest into old ladies. I'll invest into family. I'll invest into kids. I'll invest like everywhere I go. I want to invest. Dude, I can't tell you how many times I did, did a 50 to $20 tip, which when I was younger, that was a lot of money. Well, like when you just make six figures, that, that's a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. I've done a thousand dollar tip. I've done, you know, some big tips that might change somebody's month, but, um, but yeah, like, you know, definitely made their day a whole lot. I mean, you know, $50 tips. Those are, those are a lot. I've done hundred dollar tips a lot too. But um, so, so investment attitude where everywhere you go, you, you become known as somebody who's investing. This, this is uh, what, what I was really known for when I was young, when I made my first six figures is people were saying, man, have you met James Smiley? Oh, he's down there in the office. Have you met James Smiley? Oh man, you got to meet James. He's like a great guy. I'll tell you, man, that guy, he's kind of weird. Like he doesn't know that much. I mean, he's young, he's immature, like he's super green, but I will tell you, he's a guy you can trust. <laughs> Let me tell you how, like, I can't tell you how, how many, how much money I made doing that. Like with people just like, I would just tell people, Dude, no matter what, the buck's going to stop with me. I will get the answer. I will figure it out. I will be there for you. And I, I had this motto. I said, I will return 100% of your phone calls and 100% of your emails every single time. Okay. When I would stand up in front of businesses and say that, uh, I spoke at a lot of small live events. Uh, uh, I don't know, probably like literally over a couple of years because I'm on the road all the time, probably like two or 300 live events in, in a couple of years. Um, cause I was doing like three a week. So it's gotta be in the hundreds. Um, and, uh, I would be in front of anywhere between two and 30 businesses. And, um, and I can't tell you how many times people clapped, like almost like they didn't stand up and give me a standing ovation, but they clapped. They're real business owners. Listen to a 20 year old, 21 year old, 22 year old. And they, they clapped when they heard me say, I will return your every 100% of your calls and 100% of your emails. I will return. Oh, and this is the other thing. I said, I will return them the same day. People are like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah, if you call me, and guys, my phone was blowing up, okay, blowing up. This is when the BlackBerry first started, and I was just hammering my, dude, I've gone through so many damn Blackberries retarded. Remember that wheel? If you guys remember, knew there's a wheel on the side of the BlackBerry. Well, dude, that first BlackBerry I had, that wheel got so loose because I was scrolling through email so much that it would, you could just go, and it would just spin like a merry-go-round. Like, like and it was supposed to have like a clicker to where you had to actually give it torque. Well, mine just would fly. Like that's how, that's how loose it was. Another big part of my um, foundation was smiling. Okay, okay, this is hilarious because my last name is Smiley. But I became known as the guy who smiled everywhere I went. I don't care if it was McDonald's to the park, 
business deal. I lost the deal, got in the car, doing a training. Everyone knew I smiled. And when I talked, I smiled. This gave me like, like, like an ego about, about like a positive ego and a positive um, aura as well. So internally, I felt good. I felt cocky. I felt better, but I felt proud, but also it made everyone else around you smile. <laughs> like people like to be around somebody who, who smiles. Okay. Um, even people who got a grumpy look, they still like to be around somebody who smiles. Um, so this is a part of my foundation. Here's another couple of big things. I stopped drinking and smoking completely. I went completely cold turkey on drugs and alcohol. And for me, uh, it was because I was such an extremist that whatever I did, I did it in extremes. So if I was going to drink, it wasn't about drinking. It was about trying to drink 40 beers at a time. <laughs> it was about trying to hammer an entire fifth of vodka. It was about smoking more weed than everyone else. Like, so for me, I had to get rid of all that. Okay. Literally went cold Turkey and never touched it for over a decade. I literally didn't even have NyQuil. That's how stupid and crazy I was on that. Like I literally didn't have NyQuil, but that, that is a reason why I'm here today is because I did that. Okay. Um, and the reason why I'll always have deals, always have people want to work with me is because I took that time, invested that into myself and set that a part of my foundation. Now I, I, I can get into those things and, or whatever, and it's different, but, uh, but still, it's, it's still in moderation. Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't, I'm a, I can be an extremist for sure. So um, look, Here's another big thing, okay, that most of you are not willing to do. I changed 100% of my friends, okay? Now, as I had success, there was a couple of them that I stayed in touch with, okay? So when I was in my late teenage years, um, I, got kind of, I got out of high school, and I was either with jocks, like sports athletes, who we were trying to, you know, make semi-pro football teams or whatever, or, or I was with professional fishermen who were trying to be professional fishermen, which I ended up doing in my 20s. Uh, actually, I did it in my 30s. Uh, at 30, right at 30, but, um, or I was with church people. Okay. I had a lot of fun. I was doing ministry and stuff like that. I was a pastor and planning churches and stuff. And I was really into it and it was really cool. Um, but, but here's the thing, none of those people were where I wanted to go. And so literally every one of my friends, like I moved from Seattle where I was having all the success to, to California. And I started working for a company called Telenav. And that's when everything changed. You know, I hung around with smart people from Stanford, from Caltech, from MIT, um, and really, really good salespeople, business people. And you have to understand, like, you only have so much time and brain space and, and to, to, to do stuff. So like, you can either hang out with, you know, I can either, you know, you know, spend every night at the church, or I can spend every night with, you know, working on my business. And so that's what I had to do, you know. Um, and, and, and I wanted to do it and I wanted, this is what I knew all God was calling me to do. And so the only way for me to do that and to move forward was I had to let all these other people go literally, like I didn't return their calls. Um, maybe I would just be, try to be nice, but I, but I didn't try to hang out with them or anything. Um, and then later on in life, the ones who had success and were kind of in my vein, I still have good relationships with them. Like, like one of my college roommates, um, a lot of one of the colleges I dropped out of, but he is a guy named John and he went on to, um, have a super, a couple super successful startups. Um, he had a multi, a giant, giant, um, you know, multi seven figure, uh, exit and he invested into rumble and things like that. But it was funny cause we were, we were roommates, but, um, anyway, so, uh, what I'm saying is later on in life, as we had success, I, I started teaming up with those guys more and learning from them. We traveled, we did some things together, but, but when I first got into it, guys, I'm telling you, like, it was that serious to me and guys, by the way, what I'm telling you may sound extreme, but this is what all extreme people do who become anybody who come, becomes great. I don't care if it's tennis, singing, uh, whatever, a sport, this is what they do. This is who they become 24 seven. They're swinging a bat. Literally they're hitting a the ball. They're dribbling or whatever it is okay th that's all that they do you wake up hey what do you want to do i don't know go play basketball at night hey man um what do you want to do after we work out i don't know man you want to go shoot <laughs> like, you know what i'm saying that, that's what they do um here so so change of friends i physically moved locations so that i could set up a whole new life new identity new clothes all that kind of stuff and then the last big thing that was in my foundation was i made god and faith a huge part of my foundation and i can tell you that that will never ever ever return void in your life so um jesus became a big big part of my life and the last thing i want to say here guys is 
my self-confidence uh, had to grow. This is the third thing. In the way that your self-confidence grows is, is if you do number two, you set up the foundations, you trust yourself, okay? So if you trust yourself, you, you will start to trust your voice, your inner voice, okay? What you think, what you think in meetings, what, what you think about something, what your opinion is, um, why you think somebody else is wrong, you know? Um, so that would happen to me nonstop in meetings and, and whatnot. And I would, I would hear a voice, but I didn't know it was me. So I wouldn't say anything. And then later on, I would realize the person who came up with the solution, dude, I'm like, dude, I thought of that like two hours ago or two days ago, two weeks ago. Um, and so I began to learn my own voice. And so here's the thing, the more you trust yourself, the more you hear yourself, your actual self talking in your head, um, which is your, your, your self-conscious, the more you understand what your voice sounds like. And, and, uh, then the more you will also trust others and you will uh, be able to hear others more clearly, okay? One of the things is you hear people, but you don't know what they're saying or you don't know how to respond or your mind just starts wigging out and flipping out. It's because you haven't learned to hear your own voice, okay? So the first thing you gotta do is trust yourself, hear your own voice, then you will trust others and, and hear them. And um, anyway, guys, so hopefully this helps you out. Thanks for hanging out with me on this. Let me know what you think. There should be a link in this description to 13 success hacks, um, which is a, something that we did. Um, it's really inexpensive. It's probably one of the most inexpensive things, but it is a, uh, we really don't promote it at all anywhere. I don't, I don't think we promote it anywhere, but it's, uh, I'll open it up for you guys here who watched this and got to the end. Only the people who got here to the end will probably notice and see it. Um, but if you want to get into something that's super inexpensive that you can get in all over the world and get 13 more of what I just told you right there. That's going to give you some crazy, crazy stuff um, to get going. That's, I'm telling you, that's what you need. So make sure you pick that up right now. And um, I will see you on the next video, guys. Go out there and crush it. Put what I said into action. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you on the next one.